today I'm going to share with you guys my plans for the engine bay side of stuff in my Mazda RX-7 FD. In the previous video, I explained why I just bought three new modifications separate to the engine bay, which you can check out on my channel or you can click the link in the description below. So let's go over the current spec of my engine first and then we can start going over some of the new changes that's going to be happening here. Starting with my engine spec, well you can see I still have a 13B rotary engine here and not an engine swap of any kind. The engine itself was rebuilt quite some time ago now, however I've just recently done a compression test myself on this engine very recently. For you guys that want to watch a video on how to do that, I did video it and shown you guys the results of what the engine came out with. I can tell you now the result was a pass so I'm very happy with that because I can now start to progress with my future plans with this engine which I'll get to in a second. Now if I just bring you guys over here to the left through this gap you can just about see I'm still running the stock twin turbo system that the, that the stock rotary engine has and also inside of the engine itself I'm still running the stock port so I haven't got a large street port or a half bridge or a full bridge or anything like that this is still running the stock port. You're probably looking at my engine bay thinking there's nothing else that you need to do to it and it looks mega clean as it is. But to be honest with you guys, I'm starting to get a few small issues now with things like the stock twin turbos because they've started to leak oil and it's now causing me boosting issues. From what I think may be a crack in the turbo housing, but until I remove them to inspect, it's just a prediction at the moment. I'm also having silly little issues with things like perish vacuum hoses, uh, which could be related to the twin turbo setup or system, what I was just talking about. But until I start taking things apart and investigating hoses and stuff, I'm not really going to know exactly where it's coming from. But at the moment it's very minor, but I do need to get on to fixing some of this stuff because I don't want anything to turn into a major issue. So the big update that I wanted to get across to you guys in today's video was I'm finally doing a single turbo conversion on my Mazda RX-7 FD. Now this is something that I've personally wanted to do to my build for many years now. Um, the reason I haven't is because I've kind of done it the other way around to many other FD owners. I've focused on the exterior, the interior, and just kind of made the best that I could with the current engine bay as it is. Now, it's not like the engine is completely stock because you've just seen then, I have got a lot of like fancy detail parts and some performance upgrades, but nothing major. So that is going to sort of help contribute towards some of the plans that I've got coming up. So another main reason why I want to do all of this work is because you eliminate so many potential issues that can go wrong in the rotary engine bay. Things like the stock twin turbo unit that I was just saying about, the vacuum hoses, the actuators, but you can also eliminate things like the air pump, I believe, and many other things which I do need to do a little bit more research on because I've never done this before. I'm just trying to pick up things that other people's done and just apply it to what I need to be doing next. And because I bought this car for an absolute steal of a price back in 2012, all I'm doing now is just increasing my investment value too. So it's just a win-win for me and you guys also get to see a really good engine bay at the end of all of this and you can see all the hard work that's gone into it. One of the first things I've been trying to save up for since last year is this Borg Warner 362 SX Turbo Kit that a company called SAS Auto Works sells on this website. Now the reason I've chosen this particular kit is because it's perfect for the stock ported 13B rotary engines and will have a nice punchy bottom end power compared to some large turbos which is what I'm more interested in rather than having huge top end power if I'm honest. Also I'm not planning on opening up and rebuilding my engine just yet as the compression is completely fine like I said earlier so I just want to focus on everything around the engine side of stuff first and then in the future when the engine does go wrong which it will I can then just focus on the full rebuild cost, get a large street port added which will cause no issues with this particular turbo kit and any other upgrades which I will explain about in a second. So let's go over the cost of this new turbo kit and what do you exactly get for the money? Well let's just say the turbo kit that I have selected from SES Auto Works is a whopping £3,650. However you do get quite a lot of stuff for your money and you've got to bear in mind it's very very good quality stuff. So let's go through with you guys now exactly what do you get with this kit. This is what's included in the turbo kit if you was to go ahead and buy one of these kits like myself. So you should receive a T4 twin scroll manifold, a downpipe of your choice, the dump tubes or plumb back wastegates, the Borg Warner unit, turbo unit itself, two turbo smart wastegates, an SCS Auto Works heater matrix relocation pipe, the V-band clamp for the downpipe, two bolt gaskets and bolts for the downpipe too. Also, four M10 high tensile steel studs and copper nuts for the turbo. 
a T4 turbo gasket and I think you get some SAS Auto Works stickers and other little goodies in the kit included. Now if this turbo kit did not cost me enough already to get sorted out, I'm going to be taking this stuff a step further because I want to get the manifold and the turbo housing sent off a Zycro coating in black to keep that theme in my engine bay. Also followed by the downpipe being heat wrapped in black too. I also want to add a turbo blanket to the kit and then I'm probably going to change a few other little detail stuff but until I get the turbo kit to hand I don't really know what to fully change until it's in front of my eyes kind of thing. But either way it's just going to be done to a really high standard and it's going to look really mega nice in that engine bay when it's all finished, I know that for sure. Now we've gone through this turbo kit, I need to explain what is after because unfortunately this just really isn't the case of buying and bolting this onto the car and then just driving off. I will then need to upgrade everything else around this turbo kit such as the engine management side of stuff, the fueling upgrades, the cooling upgrades, the air intake stuff and much much more, plus getting the tuning side of it sorted out at the end once all of this stuff has been installed. And I already have a huge list of modifications planned for me to save up for and buy. However, it's not going to be a fast process. It's just going to be a case of me saving up, buying a part and then building up the stuff. And we can finally get to a point where I can start getting you guys to watch me fit some of this stuff in the engine bay. Now let me just bring you guys over to the corner of my garage because you can see there's a whiteboard now installed on my wall which wasn't there before. Now the reason for this is because I want to record every single modification that I'm adding to this engine bay on this whiteboard under the parts category. Then what it falls under, so you can see I've got two items already added, so the rotor shaped oil cap, which cost me around £80 but I haven't updated the cost which I'll get to in a second. That falls under an engine detail, the race only AST delete tank which I have a video on my channel for which, which you can check out if you want to have a look at that. That falls under the cooling category. Uh, that was roughly £368, but I want to get the exact figure written on this board so you guys can see it down to the penny what I am spending on this car. That then brings me over to the cost total. So if I've say got three new engine details added, the total cost there will be added into this section and then the total cost will be everything that's been added onto this whiteboard, which is the main thing that people will be more interested in. But yeah, it's just to give you guys an insight of how much these types of cars cost to modify because a lot of people really do live in a dreamland. They just think, you know, you can spend four grand and that will get you everything. It really isn't the case. So I just think this would be a bit of an insight for people how much things like these old JDM things cost. Not just RX-7s, things like Skyline Supras, um, Subarus, things like that. It, you know, it's absolute extortionate money if you want to go all out on like high modification parts so yeah that's what this is i thought it'd be really good for you guys to have something to follow along with every single video that backs up and you can just track all of the cost from start to finish so we're all interested in how much all of this stuff is going to cost of course you don't have to spend that amount on all of this stuff this is just me going all out on what i want to personally do to my build you've got to bear in mind i'm going to be selling parts as well which is going to go towards new modifications so who knows what that's going to be, um, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting, I know for sure. So let's go through some of the modifications you guys can expect to see on that whiteboard behind me. Once I'm happy with the turbo kit, I'll be looking to save up for some Haltech engine management upgrade parts, such as the Haltech Elite 1500 ECU, the wiring kit that they do, the Haltech ignition coils, and also the Haltech IC7 screen. Unfortunately, that does mean I will be losing my stock gauges though inside of the car. But I do keep getting non-stop issues with these, which is common on the RX-7. So I just feel going forward, I should just upgrade this to something more modern and reliable now. And the IC7 screen, to be honest, to me, is just the perfect replacement for them. Once I have purchased those items, I will need various sensors, etc. So the car is reading everything fluid and air related wise in the best way possible. But then that's more towards the tuning side of things. I'm also currently looking at this 3D printed cluster from this company just here which is a custom made item for the IC7 screen to mount into for the RX7 FD interior. So hopefully their products are worth the money too, but I guess I'll find out when I purchase one and then I'll have to show you guys what I think of the quality, etc. when I do receive it. Once I get all of the engine management side of stuff out of the way, I can then start focusing on some of the fueling upgrade side of stuff. So I've been doing some research and this is some of the stuff that I've been looking at to get for my RX7. 
Starting off with upgrading my stock fuel injectors to the 1050 primaries and the 1700 secondaries which injector dynamics do, followed by various radium engineering products such as the primary and secondary fuel rails, the fuel pressure regulator that they do and a few other parts to help complete the fueling upgrade setup. I'll then be looking at upgrading the fuel pump to the Walbro 450 and also buy some fresh new black braided fuel lines too. Other modifications that I'm thinking of changing will be things like the mid pipe will need upgrading which is part of the turbo kit in a way but it's just another little thing that needs doing. Um, things like the coolant side of stuff, I am going to be losing some of the upgrades that I already have in my engine, things like the blue hoses I want changed to black, other little personal preference things I want just modified and that goes the same for the air intake side of stuff so I'm going to be losing my twin ram air filters because obviously I'm not going to have twin turbos anymore so I'm pretty confident that ram air will be helping me out custom make a air filter for the single turbo kit which is all going to be on the whiteboard too. Also things like the engine detail side of stuff, so things like my purple pulleys I'm planning on stripping those back down to bare metal. Now luckily for me I had a spare alternator pulley that I could send off to be re-powder coated in a gold which is the colour I want to have in there to match my wheels and this is the result. So this is the centre pulley that goes onto the alternator and it does look really really smart, it's a very nice classy looking gold. So that's another thing that I had to be certain of. I don't want a tacky looking color put in that engine bay. Um, this here is what professional motocross riders have on their uh, forks. So the guy said I can do that on your pulley and you can like decide if that's what you like. He sent it back to me and I'm really impressed with how this is looking. I mean, I don't know how that looks on camera, but um, it definitely is gonna look pretty good. I'll probably add some more like little black details to the gold to try and break the boldness of the gold up. You're just gonna have to bear with me with everything, but I do believe it is gonna look better than the purple when everything comes together in that engine bay. So if I don't like it, then I will just get them re-powder coated. It's not an issue. One good thing with my pulleys, by the way, because a lot of people do ask me what they are and who do I get them off. They're from a company called DM Motorsport, but unfortunately they're no longer in business. So these are now extremely rare to get hold of and they never did a gold colour either. So this literally is going to be a one-off colour rare set of pulleys in the engine bay of my RX-7. So that's another reason why I've gone ahead with this idea because I just want my stuff different to everyone else's stuff in the UK. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting things like this done as well. Again, I'll be videoing everything with things being packaged, sent off, you name it, it's going to be videoed. So. Just look forward to all of the stuff yet to come. And that is pretty much the main update I wanted to get across to you guys today. I hope you're looking forward to this journey with me because now you know I've got a very expensive road ahead so you just need to bear with me regarding the cost and getting things revealed to the channel, but we will get there. So don't forget the other three modifications that I mentioned earlier. So the bonnet, the wings, and the carbon fiber arch covers. That's separate to all of the engine bay side of stuff that's gonna be on the channel too. I'm now also thinking of saving up for some two by two twill carbon fiber headlight surrounds and possibly giving it a go custom making my own halo headlights, which is gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I think I've got an idea of how to do it. It's just trying to put those ideas together and basically giving it a go. So that's now in the works too. That's pretty much it for me today, guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Until then, I'll catch you all in the next one very, very soon. And I hope you enjoyed today's video.